Hi students, I wanted to post a practice problem on the user cost of capital and the marginal product of capital, uh, finding the equilibrium, finding what the user cost is, what the optimal level of capital is, uh, just to give you a little extra practice on this material. Uh, example problem is going to follow the Mishkin text, uh, second edition of his Macroeconomics Policy and Practice, chapter 19. Uh, I want to post a video later on discussing how to develop the user cost of capital equation, talk a little bit more in depth. Uh, once I do have that, there will be a link to those, uh, but I'm not sure when I'm going to get around to doing those. For now, here's the practice problem that I promised, walking through a few of them. Uh, this is going to be off the worksheet that I sent out to you. Uh, if this is being watched by someone who's not currently in my class, uh, there's going to be a link to my website which will have this worksheet that I created on it. And it's a very simple, just three-part worksheet. It gives you some information up top, which we have here. It's going to ask you to calculate the user cost of capital, then calculate the optimal number of uh, capital that this company or this firm is going to produce, uh, or is going to use, <clears throat> not produce. And then we're going to graph it over here. So let's, so let's start by looking at the information that's uh, given to us. Uh, so we have the price of capital, which is P sub K. That is going to be 2,000 monthly memberships. See how this is a real term, meaning that it's going to be expressed in the number of monthly memberships, not necessarily a price. So if the uh, monthly memberships, let's say it was $10, then the price of capital in this case uh, would be $20,000. But we care about just how many monthly memberships this is going to be. Uh, our capital, uh, which is in the worksheet, I don't have it up here, our capital is going to be uh, treadmills, the number of treadmills that we're figuring out as a company how many to uh, purchase. We have the depreciation rate at 20%, which is 0.2. The real interest rate, 7% of 0.07. The uh, marginal product of capital, well, the expected uh, marginal product of capital is given as an equation of 1,000 minus 10K. And we have an effective business tax rate on revenues of 15% or 0.15. And so the first question part A asks us to uh, calculate the user cost of capital. And so the user cost of capital you should know by now is a very straightforward equation that says uh, the user cost of capital on the numerator is going to be uh, R plus D times PK all divided by one minus tau. And like I said, uh, I hope to post a video that goes through how to get to this. If not, you can see chapter 19 uh, of the Michigan textbook. It should have a good explanation of this. And then we just have to plug this in. So the user cost of capital, R plus D, if we look over here, is going to be 0.27. So we have 0 0.27. The price of capital is 2,000. And then one minus tau, if tau is 0.15, then I know one minus tau is 0.85. And so we do some algebra out, plug this into your calculator, and we're gonna get 635.29. 635.29. An important thing here, and you will lose credit on an exam or a problem set if you're asked this, is what is the user cost expressed in? It's the cost of capital, so it's not dollars, it's in your unit of output. And in this case, our unit of output is monthly memberships. That's what we're trying to measure everything in. So it's 635.29 monthly memberships. And that would be your answer for part A. For part B, it asks you to calculate the optimal level of capital that this firm should obtain. And that's where marginal benefit equals marginal cost. Our marginal cost is the user cost of capital. Our marginal benefit is our MPKE, or our expected marginal product of capital. We know our user cost of capital is 635.29. We know MPK is represented over here as 1,000 minus 10K. 1,000 minus 10K. And now we just have to solve for K, and that's going to be our K star, our optimal level of capital. So let's go ahead and do this. This is going to get us uh, 10K is equal to 364.71. Give us 364.71. Divide both sides, we're going to get my K star is going to be equal to 36.47. I believe the uh, 
I believe the worksheet uh, doesn't tell you what to round it to. We're just going to round it to two decimal places. Now, a lot of students ask me, well, why are you saying 0.47? Right, this is the what kind of capital. We said this was treadmills. How can you have 0.47 treadmills? Well, at the end of the day, uh, you can't have you know, 47 one hundredths of a treadmill, but if we think this may be in terms of thousands or millions, or if you're looking at Planet Fitness as, as a whole for an entire company, who knows? Uh, some people might say, well, let's round this down to 36. Uh, I'm more interested in you understanding the idea of what's going on with marginal cost versus marginal benefit. At the end of the day, the number's not a big deal to me. Part C just asks us to graph this and label point A. Uh, point A being what we found here. And so our user cost of capital uh, and our MPK are going to go on the vertical axis. So this is going to measure the user cost of capital, but also my MPKE. And down here on the horizontal axis is going to be our level of capital, our desired level of capital for this company, for this firm. You can see that the MPKE is downward sloping. Let's label this MPKE. And then we're going to have the user cost of capital does not depend on capital, so my user cost is going to just be a horizontal line. Where they cross is what we just found out, so this is going to be point A, and this down here is going to be my 36.47, and over here is going to be my user cost of capital is 635.29. Now obviously the next step in one of these problems would say, okay, if something changes, well, what's going to shift the user cost of capital? Anything right here is going to shift the user cost of capital. What's going to shift my marginal product of capital? Over here, the shift variable is going to be in this, and the stuff we talked about in class, we have uh, total factor productivity, denoted as A, which is our technology parameter, or animal spirits, some sort of change in the overall investor confidence that makes us want to uh, end up getting more investment. Uh, that's the very basic question. I'm hoping to I'll post a few more videos about this stuff, but until then, good luck on your exam.